This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on October the 31st, 2016. In this edition, James will be looking at iTunes. I'll be answering some of your questions, all on this edition of Computer Club Lesson. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. Okay, welcome back everybody. It's uh, 1 o'clock. It's that witching hour and uh, we're gonna... Also, happy Halloween everyone. Yes, happy Halloween everyone. Um, do you get kids in the in here? No? No, no. no. I just, they, they keep them out, huh? Yeah. Unless they go uh, sneaking you through the bushes. I just one of your houses and get a free candy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't mind. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we are now going to start in. Now James uh, um, answered a couple of questions uh, last week and he was a little weak on them and one of them had to do with cookies. Um, now the explanation that James gave was a little bit weak so I'm going to go over cookies again uh, and see if I can strengthen it up. Um, I know that for most of you um, old Fisher would say get rid of them damn cookies. Every time you get on, get rid of them damn cookies. Um, okay. Uh, Fisher was a nice fellow, but he was wrong. <laughs> okay, he was wrong. Cookies uh, provide two important um, services for your web browser. When you go to some place you've been before, it's the cookies. Yes, come on in and have a chair. It's the uh, cookies that remind the internet that you were at this place before and you had set up the internet to act in a certain way. Um, particularly, let's talk about banking. If you go to your bank, um, the cookies that are on your computer tell the banking site that you prefer to have the site in English, um, that you uh, prefer to have the site um, do banking rather than investments, okay? All kinds of stuff like that are predetermined by the cookies on your computer. And it's the same for other places uh, where you, you might go and listen to music. Um, if, you've, if you've set up uh, an account at these places, it's the cookies that tell the computer who you are, where your computer is located, and whether it can work for you. Uh, geofencing is another. Um, for those of you that have Netflix and look at it on your computer, um, cookies tell Netflix whether you're located in Canada or the United States. If you're located in Canada, you don't get the good stuff. Okay? You have to trick it. But that's neither here nor there. I'm not going to show you how to do it. Yes, ma'am, come on in. We have a chair waiting for you. So that's the, that's the importance of cookies. Um, clearing your cookies, um, what happens here is now with modern internet browsers, you're not clearing all your cookies. You're only clearing your tracking cookies. Now those are third party cookies that have gotten onto your computer. Um, if you go to, uh, Sears, um, Home Depot may plant a cookie on your computer or Sears will allow Home Depot to see that you've been to Sears. Okay, tracking cookies. They're following you where you go. Yes, clear those out if you want to. There's no problem with that. 
um, if you don't like the whole idea of uh, the internet knowing where you've been going and why you've been going there. So yes, in that instance, clear out your tracking cookies. Now, um, what was that program that Fisher gave you to uh, clear your cookies and uh, cleaner, C cleaner, C wasn't yeah, C Yeah, C cleaner. Um, C cleaner will clear out tracking cookies and leave the good cookies alone. Okay, so if you want to continue to use C cleaner to do that, that's fine. I personally, on all cookies, I see no problem with having cookies. Um, one, know that when you go to a website you've been before, that the website will configure itself to your liking. Rather than start all over again, it just configures itself to your liking. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I'll, I'll go with that. As far as tracking cookies go, um, the only thing that um, may become bothersome is if you have an account with, say, Amazon, and you buy stuff on Amazon. Certain websites that you go to that have a lot of advertising on it will, am will advertise Amazon stuff. They know you've been to Amazon and they know what you've bought. Here again. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. Um, I can't see where there is a real uh, security issue with tracking cookies. Okay? So let's leave cookies at that. I don't have a problem with them. And if it's uh, a lot of bother for you to get rid of cookies, um, leave them alone. If Fisher told you how to do it and you're still doing it, okay, do it. All right, so that's it for cookies. Now, the other one um, was a question about email. And that question had to do with who was, who was the, is the person here that questioned James about their email and the, the text coming in a column? Yeah, uh, I don't. Brenda said she had it happen to her, but I, I think uh, someone else did it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, Brenda was right in that uh, a lot of forwarding of an email will change the configuration of the email browser. Um, what's happening here? All email browsers now, all email programs, um, when you view the, the text body of the email, what you are in fact viewing is a web page. That's what you're viewing. It's web page technology, HTTP. Um, it used to be, and you can still do it if you're using uh, an email client locally on your computer, you can go, go in and tell the, 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 uh, the client it's, it's a hidden, hidden away a little bit. You can find it, but there's no problem with changing it. You can tell your uh, email client, don't show me web page anymore. Don't show me HTTP. Show me text. Show me rich text format. So that will allow the pictures to be in line as they always were, the pictures in the body of the text. That's what that means. If a picture is in line, it's in the body of the text. If it's not in the body of the text and it's still there, it's an attachment with the paperclip. So you download the attachment. But if a picture is in line, that means you can see it in the body of the text. And to change your local email client over to rich text format, you can do that. Um, if it's only happening once in a while um, and it's not bothersome to a great degree, just uh, forget about it. Ignore the person that sent you the email because it's probably been forwarded through 18 different people. Okay? But that's what happens is the, the, the formatting of the body of the text of the email has changed um, inside this HTTP client type and changed it to a column. 
All right, those are the two things that uh, I wanted to uh, look after um, from James's not quite all there answer. He, yeah, he's. I said I put maybe in the Q and A. Yeah, yeah, you you did, and 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 in the in the introduction to the uh, uh, to the uh, video, I also said that yes, maybe you would be answering some questions. Maybe you'd get them right. So with that, James, you're up. We're gonna. He's going to uh, talk to you a little bit about iTunes. Show you some things. Oh, I'm already copied now. Okay, up and at him. Uh. All right. So iTunes is a media service provider. Um. As you guys were probably seeing me fool around, you can find movies, um, you can buy movies and music on it, and even TV shows. Um, and this also allows you to just organize your music that you already have on your, on your computer and just play it through iTunes if you don't have, don't like media player or uh, others. And to first get iTunes, you uh, need to Google it or Bing it or Yahoo it. And just saying iTunes in Google, uh, the very first link from Apple.com, uh, you just click that and hit that download button and just go through the process of the download. Um, once you get it installed and everything, uh, it will, the icon will pretty much look like this, just a circle with a music note in it. And I don't think they, it has a home page. I think it just starts you on my music or music in general. And from here you can either add other music you have through uh, file and add file to library and you would just have to root around your computer and um, add them. You can also just, if you already know the location, you can just drag and drop into it. Uh, also with iTunes, uh, iTunes um, you will be using, uh, if you have one, uh, an iPod or an iPhone or iPad, um, it can connect to this and it can download all the songs you have through iTunes and put it on your iPod. That's what I do with mine. Uh, so you can uh, search for music and buy them. Uh, I think there's probably some free ones, um, but most of them are anywhere between a dollar twenty-nine and a bit more than that per song. Now we should we should mention right here that buying music on iTunes, you are buying it for a twenty-year-old, not a sixty-year-old. Okay. If you want to find music that you recognize yeah. and that you understand. It may not be there. Yeah, there's, um, if it hasn't, ha if it doesn't have a real life copy to it anymore, you probably won't find it on iTunes because they have to, uh, through a long process, download it from there and put it on here. And, um, so typically if it's um, older than the internet, it's probably not going to be on here. <laughs> so is there another place then that you can go if it's not on iTunes? Kind of song um, there is. Yeah, there is. I don't know where it is, but I th isn't well, it called like M we just, uh, MP3 just something? Let me jump in here for, for a second or two. Yeah, you would know where it is. Um, so that we get this on the camera and on the microphone. Uh, you can write this down. Uh, there are places like iHeartRadio, 
iHeartRadio.com. Um, there are uh, other places on the internet that you can go just simply by doing a Google search for internet radio. Um, there is uh, internetradio.com, there's AccuRadio, there are hundreds of them. Um, Slackers, uh, one, TuneIn Radio is another one. TuneIn, T-U-N-E-I-N dot com is another place where you can go and get ra um, and listen to radio. Um, you can go through um, the genres that are available in uh, TuneIn Radio and you're probably going to find something that you will like that is age appropriate for you. Um, uh, personally, I love to listen to bluegrass music. I find it here. <coughs> there are bluegrass radio stations, there's about six of them. And they're all different. So uh, that is a good place. Now, you're not getting downloadable music here. The downloadable music craze has ended. Uh, you're not going to get downloadable songs anymore. What you're going to get is live streaming. So if you want to turn your computer on and go to iTunes Radio, get some big ass speakers like this and uh, hook them up to your computer. You can listen to streaming radio throughout your house from and, and find exactly the kinds of genres that you like. Um, you're not the the last of the uh, the old um, the oldies radio stations have has left us. It's gone to all news format, so 740 is done. Zoomer Radio um, uh, locally out of Toronto. Mm, I've listened to it and I'm not impressed. They say Zoomer because it's for the boomers. All you folk. Okay, but I'm not impressed with it. So um, you can here again just go to Google and um, input internet radio stations in your search bar. You'll find hundreds of them and um, go through the genre type um, through the radio station. You can even search for oldies. Or, or however you would like to phrase it, and they, they will recommend radio stations for you. Okay? Back at it, James. Okay. So, yeah, um, uh, iTunes does have a good selection of music. Um, you just have to have an open mind to it, I guess, and like my, my stuff. Uh, but I, I like pretty much everything underneath the sun other other than rap and opera. So I even listen to bluegrass for a lot and now I'm allergic to it, so <laughs> um but yeah with with iTunes you can find music. You can also find um podcasts, which for those that don't know it's essentially like a talk show, a radio show, but it's like 99 cents most of the time and um, hundreds I'm, of them are free. Yeah, hundreds of them are free. And uh, a lot of them are educational and you can find podcasts that may pique uh, mm. your interest in a hobby that you may have. So podcasts are good for hobbies. Uh, usually there's uh, one new show a week from a podcast Sometimes two, sometimes every day. There's a new show on a podcast. And they are good for the hobbyist. If you have a particular hobby, you may find um, broadcasts about your hobby in podcasts. 
Um, yeah, there is, there's even an, its own tab um, for it. So typically you'll always have music, movies, and TV shows um, there followed by three dots. And if you hover over that three dots, you'll also then get podcasts, iTunes University, which I think is learning. Uh, you can get books from here, um, apps, and in internet radios as well. I'm just going to go into podcasts and you can probably then search this and say, oh, I want computer broadcasts, get a bit of head of the game. And here you go, there's uh, several uh, podcasts that will... Um, teach you more about computers if you want um, there's uh, TED Talks is pretty good at does everybody know what TED Talks are? no okay uh, TED Talks, I'm going to come up again James <laughs> get the other way uh, TED Talks are important um, TED Talks are uh, about four or five times a year there we go TED Talks uh, about four or five times a year um, throughout North America and sometimes in Europe uh, um, programs are put on where 20 or 30 or 40 uh, guest speakers come to a TED Talks forum and they give uh, a talk anywhere from 5 minutes to 20 minutes. That's what they're, they are um, usually limited to. 5 minutes for a, a really great idea that's not fully formed. Um, 20 minutes for a fully formed idea that, um, that people want you to hear about. And this is just it. These are fully formed ideas, the newest ideas that are available for people to peruse. Um, I haven't um, watched any of these. I haven't had time for TED Talks for a month or so, but uh, enough with the fear of fat, okay? It's 12 minutes and 20 seconds long. I imagine that this lady here is going to tell you why you are good enough the way you are. Mm -hmm. And that's a good thing. Okay? Um, how loss helped one artist find the beauty in imperfection. Okay? Maybe that's talking about grief. Um, and on and on and on it goes. Oops. Oops. Um, Hey, we're in yeah, there are TED Talks um, on just about every subject you can imagine, and they are everything from the most serious, serious, serious to the most flippant and silly, and they will have you laughing for hours with a five-minute presentation. <laughs> so you can find them. TED Talks is a great great resource. Yes. TED Talks. Yes. TED Talks.com. You can go through TED Talks and you can find lots of things to do. Try it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, you guys remember the Internet of Things for all, all the people who've been here a while when Grandpa talks about the Internet of Things. He mainly got that from TED Talks. He just listened to a bunch of those and was like, I gotta tell these people. <laughs> so yeah, you can find podcasts, you can probably find pretty much anything underneath the sun. Um, TV shows if you want to say, hey, I want to watch French Prince of Bel-Air. That was, that was a good one for me. Uh, <laughs> you can watch that as well if it will have a load. Thank you. So, again, um, you can just search here and be like, 
I want, well, I want Fresh Prince. Prince, if I can spell it right. And there we go. I have pretty much every every season here underneath the sun. So are you paying now to watch those, or can you just click on them? Uh, you do have to. Uh, you can either buy an episode by itself. Um, that's typically two forty nine, um, or you can buy the whole season to watch. Um, iTunes is a business. Um, they they allow you to watch these things through legal means. So, um, for example, music. You can download music and put them in there. You can preview it too. You can yeah, you can pre preview, preview it. it. Yeah. However, uh, you can't attach that video to anything or the song to anything because you don't technically own it. So, um, iTunes will stop you from like illegally giving people songs because um, these support um, iTunes supports the authors and artists and and everything and I find that good because I um, like if you want if you like something I think you should like pay for it because it says hey I want you to make more and do stuff with it yeah. When you talk about costs, uh, are these in American funds or Canadian, or does it depend on? Um, they look to be Canadian. Um, with iTunes, it typically um, it tells where you are and uh, converts it automatically. That's another thing about cookies. Okay, you're looking at an American website through uh, <coughs> iTunes.ca. Canada. Cookies know where you are and it will give you the website in Canadian dollars. That's why cookies are a good thing. And not all um, uh, not all places do uh, do this that sell things. Some some of them still get confused and show you the USD but just taking that and putting it into Google itself and say what's the Canadian version of this it will typically give you it. Um, so you can find TV shows. Again, I was looking for a good scary movie that we could all watch instead of doing this. <laughs> uh, you know, it's Halloween. We should be scared. Um, so yeah, you can find, again, any genre uh, that suits your fit. Comedies, action, adventure, uh, horror. Um... Uh, and you can just keep going, like books. Again, you can probably find books on computers for dummies or other computer things. James, if you're going to order one of those and pay for it, how would you go about doing it? There's two ways. You can do it either through your card, either credit card or debit card or... Uh, any other car that I don't know about or for example if for your birthday you tell them hey can you give buy me an iTunes card and you can use that um, and redeem the code for it and you will get the money for that so you would get like 25 bucks you can spend 25 bucks on iTunes and it won't come out of your pocket do you just click on a movie or yeah you would uh, just go towards the point where you do that so they know how to do it. Yeah, so waiting for the first light. And it just says right here, buy, buy the book for $15.99. Now, I'm not going to click on that because um, Scrapper would probably kill me. But um, you can even gift this book if you want to buy it for someone else that you know who has iTunes. Um, just by clicking this arrow and going to gift this book. Um, typically if you have an iTunes card it goes into what's known as an iTunes wallet and you will typically see uh, 
see it somewhere on the top bar of just how much money you have in that wallet and you can do that and like click it um, by book and you can sh um, pick do you want to do it through debit visa or the steam wallet uh, I'll click it because I think I can back out of it oh no <laughs> yeah no I'll just back out of that so <laughs> I saw it pur purchasing, I'm like, oh god, please don't. <laughs> so, the other thing you're going to need, which is why it, it stopped me, is you're going to need a iTunes account. Or an Apple account, to be more precise. And um, they're free to set up, not that uh, difficult. So you always have to put in your password when buying something. Um, just so you don't accidentally buy something like I almost did. And um, to do that, you would just, I'm going to sign you out of here, Grandpa. Well, to do that, you would just go here uh, and click the person in a circle and hit create Apple ID. And it will eventually bring up a um, new page and you can hit continue and then accept all of this all the way at the bottom or not left it up a little I think it's on the bottom oh I'm not all the way at the bottom oh my first oh yeah, 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 yeah okay I gotcha <laughs> I pick up what you're throwing down okay so check mark that and agree and then you can put in your email address, a password, and then security info. Now those are very important as if you forget your password or someone is on going onto another computer and hacking into it, they um it will ask you every once in a while. Um for example, what was the name of your best friend as a teenager? Well, I, I didn't really have one. But write everything down. Yeah, down. make sure you write everything down the exact way that you put, typed it. If you had a capital letter there, make sure it's a capital letter. Because I've been locked out of many things because I forgot. I'm like, oh, I, I will, I'll remember that. <laughs> oh, God, what did I put down? <laughs> um... Because some of them were like, what's your favorite snack? I have a favorite. Who was your first animal snake? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what was your name of your first pet? And they're always going to be a different selection. So what is your dream job, your favorite children's book? And so you would put all those down. And then after, you can even put down an optional um, rescue email. Which is essentially, if you do get locked out, it will send a email to this other email address that will say, "Yo, you're trying to someone's trying to hack you or do something," um, and this is how you can get out of it. And then I changed my password once. Yeah. They sent me an email and said, did you <coughs> change your password, lady, you know? Oh, yeah, they will ask you about everything. Yeah, so they do check. Um, you just, then you put in your date of birth. And if you want to receive a, a, any newsletters or recommendations from Apple, um, typically I say no to those, but you can if you want, if you want to actually know everything about it and then you would just hit the continue button that's beside the restart required <laughs> I can't close it currently come on oh, there it is there we go. so you would hit continue and there you go you will have your account make sure you write everything down don't be me <laughs> um, so once you do that, you can then do anything to your heart's content.
um, buying music or anything, yeah? Apple keep putting updates in fairly regularly. Yeah. Am I hurting myself if I don't keep it up, up to date? Because they hide things sometimes and I have to go searching for how to convert a song or, you know. Well, it depends what updates, because some updates, I think, just update the, um, the, what's Some it? updates just update the code to make it run a little better. Uh -huh. uh, some updates are required because uh, all of a sudden iTunes won't work. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you have to, you have to. I'm, I'm trying to actually think of the word I'm looking for. Some of them will update the selection of what you can get in the iTunes store so sometimes they update it and you can get more songs that weren't on there before. Okay. All right. um, so typically it's it's good to stay up to date with everything especially if you have um, an iPod or iPad uh, or... I have an, yeah, an MP3 and I yeah. convert the music when I, my, in my library so you know I've got the MP3 version as well as the iTunes so I, every time they put an update in, they hide the conversion, you know, how to convert it, and I have to go hunting for it. So I just, you know, I've left yeah. things, but okay. Um, typically, the help button will always help you find okay. uh, these things. Yeah. Um, I'll also, rem uh, remember a couple days, uh, weeks ago, I talked about keyboard shortcuts, and every program has their own. Uh, typically, in the help section, if they do have others, they'll have a keyboard shortcuts um, option and you can see uh, all the shortcuts or even set up your own. So, for example, start and stopping the song, uh, the space bar, and so on and so forth. So really you can learn a lot through here. You can even probably find um, the shortcut for conversion. Okay, and then those will always stay the same, pretty much. Yeah. Do I need to keep both versions of the song, the iTunes version as well as the converted version? It's, it's probably best to keep the original as well. It doesn't uh, hurt you too much because what I, uh, iTunes does is when you purchase it, it takes it puts it in its data bank that says you own this so you can download it anytime you want on any computer that you own with this oh, account okay. You can, okay. so if you do accidentally delete something you don't have to worry oh god I have to buy it again uh, iTunes will say you, you own this you can download it again for free um, again that only works if you purchased it if you put a song into it uh, illegally it will say uh, you can't download that for free because it knows that you didn't actually buy it. Uh, that pretty much covers uh, iTunes as far as I can tell. Any questions? I did good? <laughs> <laughs> well, we still have 20 minutes. Okay, Let's watch a movie. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, underneath help. Um, it's just keyboard shortcuts oh, okay. is its own option. Yeah. And I'm um, pretty sure you can change these if if you so inquire to. But uh, I would recommend not. Yeah. Unless you remember that I changed it to this. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I think I'm in the wrong room. Why is that? Well, I have this iPad. It was my husband's. Right. I haven't got much of a clue about anything. So I'm listening to all this. Well, I'll tell you what we can do here. You're not in the wrong room. Um, we don't do uh, a lot of Apple stuff here. Is Apple? That's Apple. Um, this is the computer club. That's a computer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you have um, some issues with it, um, perhaps you can come uh, maybe 10-15 uh, minutes early next week and uh, I will 
uh, endeavor to get you up and running so that uh, you can do email and you can surf the, surf the internet and stuff like that. Like I have got things, but I didn't know how I got them. I'm, I'm on Skype and I'm talking to England and I didn't even know how I did it. So you see. Well, <laughs> if, if you want to come 10 or 15 minutes early next week, uh, We'll, uh, I can go through Skype with you. Uh, if, if you've got Skype working, okay, I can go through it with you and, uh, and show you some things uh, about what you'll need to do with Skype. Yeah, that's, okay? That's just one thing. Like, yeah, like well, uh, come every week and believe me, uh, after a while, uh, Windows is not so different than Apple stuff. And if you get a little kernel of information from the Windows tutorial, like this one, just simply going to the help button, okay? And all of these things are here about iTunes in help. It's the same thing with Skype. So now you've gotten that little kernel that you might be able to find things for yourself just simply by knowing that there's a help button there and go through the help button. The other part of it is, is uh, do we have your email address? No. Well, I want you to give uh, Fred your email address before you go, and you will get every week a video of, of the class. And if there's something in the class that piqued your interest, same for all of you, the piqued your interest, it'll be available on the video if the video didn't mess up. <laughs> okay, so um, I think we'll uh, um, come and see me early next week before uh, like quarter to one or something like that and we'll sit down with your iPad and every week I'll show you something. And I want to talk to my kids when I go away. Yeah, well if they've got your Skype, um, your, your Skype handle, they can talk to you. Easy enough, and you can talk to them. Okay, any uh, questions now about uh, some other things? And we will be happy to help you with your with your Apple stuff. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, your Windows Seven computer is just about the same as Windows Ten. Down here in the uh, lower right, you'll see your date. If you click on that, um, let me see, maybe a right click. I think it was right click. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And uh, you'll see here in Windows 10, it gives you a just date and time, but in, in uh, Windows 7, uh, you, don't, you don't get all this brouhaha, it just says adjust date and time. You'll click on that, adjust date and time, and it will uh, bring up um, in this section here. Um, yes, it is a little bit different, um, but you will, um, in Windows 7, you'll look around for an entry. Uh, that's called change date and time formats. <laughs> okay, so when you click on that, you were able to. No. No, sorry. <laughs> it, I, I, Go ahead. I, I, I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> again, you right click on here, just date and time. We have set time automatically on. Um, so, if you don't actually have it on, it will probably have, say, off. Um, no, in Windows 7, you really gotta, it's really buried. You've right. got to go down to NTIS. Well, I'm going to turn it off so we can actually change the date Why and time. Why would it just change on its own like that? Uh, updates, typically, like the yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, what's happened is that uh, Windows 7 has a manual mode for the date and time. And the computer just got few confused. Um, maybe the battery on your computer is a little weak or something. Something happened where it got confused about what day it was. 
Um, and uh, to that end, you do have to change it by hand. Um, and like I said, to, to have it do it automatically, you've got to you've got to chunk down about three windows underneath where we're telling you to go to change it to uh, to uh, to update the time automatically from a time server that serves the internet. Yeah, I can have a quick look at it. I can have a quick look at it, and, and it's important. Yeah, time is important because. If you do banking, then your banking site may not work because your computer was talking to the bank site two days ago. As far as the bank site is concerned, if, you're, if your computer is stuck on Saturday and it's Monday, uh, it may not work properly. Well, then uh, it, it's not going to work properly at all because um, you're confusing the, the bank site about um, uh, about the date and time you're actually trying to do um, uh, move money or pay a bill or something like that um, it's it's confusing for the bank site and it'll, it'll say uh oh I don't want to talk to you anymore I'll go to sleep now so uh, yeah uh, after we're done here maybe I'll just slip over for a minute and have a quick look but typically you just want to hit the change date and time and look at something that you know that's right and change it to the right days. Um, some computers like to be in uh, army time for some reason. Uh, you just have to do the math and figure out what's what's five o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a Windows 7 box here to show you exactly what to do, but I'll come over. Okay, any other questions? Um, you had one other one you wanted to talk about? No, I think it was just that. Oh, you had, yes. what was yours? Uh, Microsoft accounts. You need to fix your Microsoft account for apps on your other device to be able to launch apps and continue experiencing yeah. on this device. What's, what's happened is that uh, your Windows 10 computer you have Windows 10, right? Um, uh, it's um, the Microsoft account on your Windows 10 computer has lapsed or changed in some way. When um, I log into Windows 10 on this with a Microsoft account, that means that if I make a change in my Office computer, which is also Windows 10, I can tell that Office computer, make the change on my laptop the next time I log into Windows. And so that change will be saved on my Microsoft account and it will migrate over to this laptop the next time I fire it up. That's what it's talking about. Now, you don't use a Microsoft account for anything, so I would not worry about it anymore. Um, if you were buying stuff, from Microsoft, then you have to you have to fix it up, and that is a real pain in the woohoo. I have to fix my wife's. It's going to take me the best part of an hour when I get home to fix it. There's a bad part of the error. <coughs> hmm? There's a bad part of the error. <laughs> That's new to me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This lady in front of me still has Windows Seven. Yeah. That wasn't automatically updated to Windows Ten. Um. Or? You can refuse to. You can refuse it, and sometimes it has to do with the the the, uh, the computer itself, the hardware. Um, if the hardware is not capable of taking the uh, Windows 10 update <clears throat> at the time, uh, it just won't take it, and it won't. It doesn't even bother telling you about it. You just remain as Windows 7. I think I refused it. I can't quite remember. Yeah. Yeah, if you refuse if you refuse the Windows 10 update in in some of the early stages, it would say, "Okay, I'm never going to bother you again." But in some of the later stages of the Windows 10 update uh, upgrade cycle, um, it would keep bothering you and bothering you and bothering you, and then it would do it all by itself. Some of you went through that. It would do it all by itself, 
And then the problems began. Well, if you want Windows 10 now, you have to buy it? Yes. And if you bought a new computer, well, it comes It comes with yeah. Windows 10. Um, so, not to worry there. Buying a new computer now. Um, three years ago, uh, a new desktop to get something decent was about 800 bucks. Uh, now it's closer to four. Prices are falling into the tank. And so that will continue on. I know when I bought this, when I bought this laptop, uh, originally this laptop probably sold for somewhere about $2,100. I bought it for three. Okay. Yeah, but then say how much you bought it for your MacBook Pro. <laughs> well, my MacBook Pro, which I don't bring here anymore, I paid three thousand dollars for that puppy. Yes. Uh, on, online uh, uh, poker stars, um, they will come up with a new, a new version for download. And, and you go through and you download it all, but you never see any changes on the actual... So all of those changes for PokerStars and all of the other poker sites that you have to download a client to make it work, um, the, uh, the people that own uh, PokerStars and all of the other ones out there are very, very uh, tuned in to the fact that these... Um, these programs can be hacked, they can be compromised. If you're playing for money, even if you're playing for fun, there are people out there who just for the fun of it will hack you and, um, and compromise your account. Um, there, was it last year or the year before, um, one of the big time professional poker players was uh, accused of compromising some of the poker sites and then sitting down to play for money. And apparently he won millions and uh, he cheated. He could see your cards before you did. <laughs> so uh, they, they update and upgrade the clients for the poker sites all of the time to take care of these what we call zero day vulnerabilities in the in the game anything else yes a question offside in regard to to uh, printers if you run out of ink and you have to buy new uh, compartment People are telling you just to throw your printer out and buy another one that already has the ink in it because it's less expensive? Um, it is a little more expensive, but not by much. I have a printer at home, an HP printer, that it cost me $70 to replace the ink in it. Mine just did, too. Yeah, 70 bucks. I can go to the store and buy a printer on sale for $70. Um, it's a it's a terrible waste. Um, I know some of you know the uh, the calculation that I did a couple of years ago on uh, what the cost of printer ink is. Now you at the time you thought a gallon of gas or a liter of gas was expensive at like a buck forty. Um, milk was like five dollars for a liter and a half. Um, even water, if you sit down and figure out the cost of water, um, it's, it's a little expensive. Printer ink, little cartridge of printer ink. If you got a whole bunch of them, those little cartridges, and ripped them open and dumped them into a gallon bucket, how much would you spend Five. to fill that bucket? $5, You're close. That $5,000, he's a little light. It's closer to $8,000 a gallon 
for printer ink. When you buy a, a printer, though, they give you the smallest amount yeah. available. Exactly. In their yeah. It's so just you enough to get you going and get you hooked. Uh -huh. So you have to weigh out the difference. There are there are places that you can go and buy uh, off-brand printer ink on the internet. Uh, it all depends on your printer whether they will work. HP's usually don't. Epsom's usually do. Um, Lexmark, some of the older ones will work with uh, off-brand printer ink, and there are a few others. Um, you just have to um, know what you're doing and know what you're looking at and ask a lot of questions and sometimes you can buy printer ink online for about one-fifth of the cost of buying it at the store. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you can do, and this, and this is for all of you that, that buy expensive printer ink, is go into the settings on your printer. You'll have to search around for them and maybe go online and uh, ask the question, how do I set my printer for draft, D-R-A-F-T, draft copy? Because what will happen with draft copy is the printer will spit out a copy using two-thirds less ink than for a, a full-on production copy. Okay, you can still read the copy, you can file it away and it's not going to fade, but it used two-thirds less ink. Draft. Check your printer for a setting for draft and use that. And if you don't know where it is, Google is your friend. HP printer, the number. How do I set to draft? Okay, and there will either be written instructions there or there's probably a video, a YouTube video. There's probably a video showing you how to do it. But that can save you a whole pile of money. If you're spending 70 bucks every two months, maybe you can spend the 70 bucks every six months. So it's pretty money. Yeah. Okay, folks, that's about it. I think we've uh, just about we've just about beat this to death. So give me your address. Thirty. Just saying. Oh, okay. All right. I'll uh, be over to see you after I get packed up, and uh, we'll uh, take it from there. Uh, we'll have the video up as soon as I can uh, when we uh, when I get back home. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.